Welcome back to another week of the Book of Ephesians Bible Study, where you guessed it, we are studying through the Book of Ephesians. And if you're wondering, this is actually the 31st week of us doing this together. Before we start, let's pray. Father, we come to you today in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you for this opportunity that we have to look into your word and to grow as believers. Father, I pray that the eyes of our understanding are opened as we're doing this study today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, let's get right into this Bible study. So today I'm going to continue off of Pastor John Mark, who did Bible study two weeks ago, and we're still going to be working through the fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians. And the context of this chapter of Ephesians is largely about the unity of the body of Christ. We see that we have many differences in the way that people are created and the way that we go through our callings and the things that God has called us to do. And even though we have all these differences in talent and abilities, we're all still a part of the same body. And in verses four through six, I'm going to paraphrase it, but it says there's one body, there's one spirit, there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God who's the father of all. And there is one, oh, that's it, one God who's the father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. And that shows us that in the midst of all of our differences, we are all still a part of one family, and that is the body of Christ. So let's read our main two verses today that we'll be focusing on, verses 11 and verse 12. And these verses are about the fivefold ministry, which are ministries that Jesus gave out, giftings that Jesus gave out that are created to empower and build up his church. Let's read verse 11, and it says this, And he, which is Christ, he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry for building up the body of Christ. I'm going to read that last part again. The purpose of these gifts is for building up the body of Christ. We know that he in the passage is Jesus, gave these gifts to build the body of Christ. And then when we look at the ministry of Jesus, he operated in all of these gifts. Jesus was an apostle. He would plant. He was a prophet. He would speak on behalf of God. He was an evangelist. He spread the good news. He was a shepherd, and he was also a teacher. And I believe that when Jesus finished his work, that he took these giftings that he walked in and he distributed them to the church so that we could continue to build the church just as he built his church when he was here with us. So before we talk about the prophets, I really want us to understand verse 12, where it says that we're equipping the saints for the work of ministry and we're building the body of Christ. If you believe today that you've been given these gifts by God, any one of them, but you walk in a ministry or you walk in your life in a way where you're not building up the body, but you're destroying the body of Christ, that is not a gift from God. Because a gift from God is going to build up the body of Christ, not break it down. I repeat, the gifting from God is going to build up the body, not break it down. So if you're walking around and you're breaking down the body of Christ, and you're discouraging the body of Christ, you might have a gifting from Amazon, from the children's place. It might even be a gifting from Burger King. It is not a gifting from God if it is not building up his church. All right, so enough about that. Let's talk about the spiritual gift of prophets, the fivefold ministry of the prophet. The Greek word for prophet is pretty close to the English word. It's prophetes. I believe I'm saying that right. Prophetes. And the short definition of this word prophetes is a prophet. It's always nice when you use the definition in the word, but a prophet, which is an interpreter or forth teller of the divine will. And the long definition of a prophet is one that declares the mind, which is the message of God, which sometimes predicts the future and more commonly speaks forth his message for a particular situation. So in terms of speaking about a prophet, there's one thing that we need to know about God is that God isn't like us where he needs to learn certain things or gain a knowledge. God is what we call omniscient. 
He possesses all knowledge. Omniscient is two words. Omni, meaning all, and scient is like science. So omniscient or all science, all knowledge. God doesn't need to learn. He doesn't need to find out things. He already knows the beginning from the end. So if this God that holds all knowledge tells you something is going to happen, guess what? It's going to happen. And if you believe that God told you something's going to happen and it didn't happen in that case, like God says, it's going to rain exactly at this time and it doesn't rain at that time. It wasn't a message from God because God's not playing a guessing game. He holds all knowledge. And when God gives us a word of prophecy, which is to build up his church, that thing is going to happen. When God speaks, it comes to pass. God is never wrong. Now, false prophets, on the other hand, are wrong. And I want to put in a quick note here that I just thought about, that there are times in the Bible where God says, if there isn't this change that you make, then this thing is going to happen. The person makes the change and what God warned them about doesn't happen. So in that case, we see that God does give them a word where he says something's going to happen. If you don't make this change, they make the change and it doesn't happen. That is a case where we do see that God says something which is encouraging, building up, but it doesn't necessarily happen the way that it would have happened if they didn't take that piece of advice. But speaking about false prophets, we see false prophets in Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 16. Listen to this description. Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, filling you with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. That's a perfect example of a false prophet. They're not speaking words that are from God. They're just saying words that are in vain. They're saying words that are coming from their own minds and not from the mouth of the Lord. A true prophet, on the other hand, speaks in a way where they are repeating what God told them to say. And those things do build up the church and they do always happen. The Bible says of a true prophet, which his name was Samuel, that not a single word that he spoke fell to the ground. Or in other words, when he said it, it was happening. He was a legitimate prophet. He was speaking words on behalf of God. And we see more about prophecy in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 21 where it says this, For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. In other words, if the almighty God who possesses all knowledge gives you words to speak, if he says this is going to happen, it will happen. I repeat, it will happen. And a lot of prophecy, like we saw in the definition, might be about saying something before it happens, giving a piece of insight into the future. But I want to remind us all that that's not the end all of prophecy. That is just fortune telling. There is more to prophecy than saying something that's going to happen in the future. As we see in the scriptures in this passage of Ephesians, that these giftings are made and given out to build up the body of Christ. So it's not just a matter of saying what's going to happen. It also needs to build up the body of Christ, not destroy the body, but build up the body. And this is very important for us to realize, because imagine if I sat here today and I said, I'm a prophet and thus saith the Lord here. The words of the Lord. The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun. Tomorrow, tomorrow I'll love ya. Tomorrow, you're only a day. Away. Now, let me ask you something. Do you feel edified? You probably feel unedified. Like the last seven weeks of Bible study, I unedified you 
And Pastor Brian's going to have to build you up next week because of that word that I just gave you. Prophecy is not saying that the sun is going to rise tomorrow. Is the sun going to rise tomorrow? I'm going to say 99.9%. Yes, the sun is going to rise tomorrow. Did that message that I bring edify the church? <clears throat> nope. I probably broke it down just a little bit. And Pastor Brian's going to rebuild it next week in his Bible study. But all jokes aside, if we looked at prophecy as fortune telling, then what I just did was a prophecy that the sun is going to rise tomorrow. But when we really talk about what prophecy truly is, a word from God to build up the church, that was not an example of prophecy. That was not me operating in the prophetic gifting. And we see more about prophecy and what it truly is in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1, where it says this, Pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. Why is there emphasis on prophecy in this scripture? We see the answer in verse 3. It says in the second half of verse 3 that the one who prophesies speaks to the people for their upbuilding, their encouragement, and their consolation. In other words, when you're truly prophesying, you are building up the kingdom of God by building up God's people. That is the mark of true prophecy. You're speaking on behalf of God to build up the church. That is an image of what prophecy is. Does that conclude this week's Bible study? No. It's like one of those commercials, but wait, there's more. Stay tuned now and you'll get blah, blah, blah. There is more than just prophecy that I want to talk about today. Because I want to make it very clear. Listen closely. If, you, if you're in the background, listen to this. This is very important. That just because a true prophet speaks words on behalf of God to build up the church, it does not mean that we need to wait on a prophet to hear the voice of God. I'm going to say that again. We do not need to wait on a prophet as Christians to hear the voice of God of God. The reason that there's so much about prophecy, especially in the Old Testament, is that there is a separation between mankind and God. There was a veil that separated God from humanity, and most people wouldn't have access to God, so they'd rely on the priests and the prophets to give them the information of what God is saying because they couldn't hear it for themselves. That was the reality for a long time. But when Jesus came into the earth, everything changed. When Jesus came to the earth, that veil that separated mankind from humanity was torn. And Jesus made a way that we would have access to our Heavenly Father in a way that the world had never seen before. It's almost like Adam and Eve walking in the garden with their Heavenly Father. It's like we can walk with God and we can talk with God and we can have a relationship with God because of the sacrifice that Jesus made. As we look in the book of Hebrews, we see, and this is targeted to a Jewish audience, we see this port portrayed perfectly. It starts in Hebrews chapter 1 by saying that in the latter days and the days before the current day in that time period, he said that God spoke to us through the prophets. And then in the next verse, it says in Hebrews, but now God speaks to us through his son. So it's putting that perfect image that, yes, God used to speak through the prophets. And then it says, but now it's changed. The veil was torn. Now God spoke to us through his son, and the son tells us that we have access to the father and his word through the sacrifice that, we ma that he made. We now have access to God, our heavenly father. We don't have to sit back and wish that we could hear God's voice. We can now hear God's voice, and we can talk to him, and we can have a relationship with him because of what Jesus did. In summary, I want to sum it up this way with this example. I've had a few hangouts with some friends, 
and there's sometimes there's a core group of friends that goes to one friend's house and then there's somebody that's not in the core group of friends they're kind of on the outside looking in so there's a group of friends that knows the homeowner and then there's this outsider that only knows one or two people there when they want the wi-fi password what do they do they talk to the person they're comfortable talking to and they say hey can you, can you go to the owner of the house and get me the Wi-Fi password? What's the password? I don't know them well enough. I don't feel like I can access them to ask them what the password is. Can you get me the password? That's kind of how it was before, where we were kind of the friend on the outside, and we'd have to go to the pastor or to the prophet or to the priest to get a word from God, where we didn't have direct access. But nowadays, you know what God's saying to us? He's saying, you can come to me to get the Wi-Fi password. You don't have to wait for somebody else. You don't have to wait for Pastor Mike to get a message. You can come directly to me. Ask me, what's the password? Blood of the Lamb 22. You can connect. And I got healing and a bunch of stuff in the fridge for you. You have full access to your heavenly Father. You don't need to wait for somebody else to speak for you, to hear God's voice for you. We all have access to the same Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us. And we all have access through the blood of Jesus to our Heavenly Father. So in summary today, one, a prophet is not a fortune teller, but somebody who is speaking words on behalf of God to build up his church, to edify his church. And second, I want to remind you, we all have access to the Father through the name of Jesus. Don't feel for one second that you need to rely on somebody else to have a relationship with God for you because that's not the way that it works now. Jesus came down to this earth to give us access to our heavenly Father. Let's pray today. Father, I thank you for this word that we just had. I pray, God, that as we're going throughout our lives, that we're reminding ourselves that we don't need to wait on somebody else to speak for you, God, but that we can go right to you directly because we have access to you through Jesus. I thank you, God, that we have a great rest of our night or day whenever we're watching this. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Toodles.